students in previous classes i was uh, discussing about uh, issues in decision tree learning and uh, the related approaches so in that uh, i have discussed uh, two of the important issues and uh, the approaches one is avoiding overfitting the data and second one is reduced error proning so in today's class i am going to discuss rule post proning so this is uh, one of the quite successful method for finding the high accuracy hypothesis so this technique is known as uh, rule post proning so rule post proning is basically one of the uh, successful method for finding the high accuracy hypothesis that is rule post proning so a variant of this proning method is used by c4.5 algorithm which was uh, developed by quinlan in 1993 so it is an outgrowth of the original id tree algorithm so this method is considered as an outgrowth of the original id tree algorithm here rule post proning involves the following steps as you can see there are four steps so there are four steps in rule post proning so the first one is infer the decision tree from training set growing the tree until the training data is fit as well as possible and allowing overfitting to occur the second step is convert the learned tree into an equivalent set of rules by creating one rule from each path from root node to the leaf node so this step is nothing but converting a learned tree that is uh, converting a learned decision tree into an equivalent set of rules by creating one rule from each path from root node to a leaf node third step is a prune here prune is nothing but generalize so generalize each rule by removing any preconditions that result in improving its estimated accuracy and the last step is sort the prune rules by their estimated accuracy and consider them in this sequence when classifying the subsequent instances so these are what uh, the different steps in a rule post pruning method so to illustrate this uh, again consider the decision tree as uh, shown in this figure i hope uh, the construction of this decision tree that you have studied in one of the previous class so now consider this uh, decision tree so in uh, rule post pruning one rule is generated for each leaf node in the tree it means that in this rule post pruning one rule is generated for each leaf node in the decision tree here each attribute test along the path from root to the leaf becomes a rule antecedent which is nothing but uh, a precondition here and uh, the classification at uh, the leaf node becomes a rule consequent a rule consequent is nothing but post condition it means that each attribute set along the path from root to the leaf node it becomes a precondition and the classification at uh, the leaf node becomes a rule post condition so this is important for example now consider the leftmost path of the tree now consider uh, this leftmost path of the tree that is uh, outlook equal to sunny and humidity equal to high now consider this leftmost path of the tree here if outlook equal to sunny and humidity equal to high then plate nh equal to no as you can see in this figure if outlook equal to sunny humidity equal to high then the result plate nh is equal to no next each such rule is pruned by removing any antecedent or precondition so whose uh, removal does not impact its uh, estimated accuracy so given this above rule for example the rule 
post pruning would consider removing the pre conditions that is the outlook equal to sunny and humidity equal to high so it would select uh, whichever of these pruning steps produced the greatest improvement in estimated rule accuracy then consider the pruning that is consider pruning the second pre condition as further pruning the step so no pruning step is performed if it reduces the estimated rule accuracy this is how the rule pruning or rule post pruning work so that is already uh, as it is already noted uh, one method to estimate rule accuracy is to use a validation set of examples disjoint from the training set so another method which is used by c4.5 algorithm is to evaluate performance based on the training set itself using a pessimistic estimate to make up for the fact that the training data gives an estimated bias in favor of the rules so more precisely c4.5 calculates is the pessimistic estimated by calculating the rule accuracy over the training examples to which it applies then calculating the standard deviation in this estimated accuracy assuming a binomial distribution for a given confidential level the lower bound estimate is then taken as the measure of rule performance that is uh, for 95 percentage confidence intervals the rule accuracy is estimated by the observed accuracy over the training set minus uh, 1.96 estimate times the estimated standard deviation this is some calculation so here the net effect is that for the large data sets the pessimistic estimate is uh, very close to the observed accuracy that is uh, standard deviation is very small in this case whereas it grows further from observed accuracy as the size of data set decreases although this heuristic method is not statistically valid but it has a uh, been found uh, useful in practice that is in real time now there is one question uh, why to convert the decision tree to rules before pruning so why you need to convert the decision tree into the set of rules before pruning actually for that uh, there are uh, some of the advantages so these are what uh, the Uh, main advantage is by, by converting a uh, decision tree really into the set of rules before pruning so first advantage is converting the decision tree really to rules allows uh, distinguishing among the different context in which a decision mode is used because each distinct path through the decision tree really mode produces a distinct rule and the pruning decision regarding that attribute test can be made differently for each part so in contrast if the tree itself were pruned the only two choices should be to remove the decision node completely or to retain in its original form so this is what one of the advantage for converting decision tree to set of rules before pruning and the second advantage is that converting the decision tree to rules it removes a distinction between attribute test that occur near the root of the tree and those that will occur near the leaves so the distinction it will remove thus we avoid uh, these such issues uh, such as uh, how to recognize the tree if the root node is pruned while retaining the part of sub tree below this test the very last advantage is converting the decision tree to rules it improve the readability and uh, the rules open easier for the people to understand so these are what uh, some of the advantages by converting the decision tree to rules before pruning so this is an important approach here to respect to the issues in uh, decision tree learning So the next one is uh, incorporating uh, continuous value attributes 
one initial uh, definition of id tree is uh, restricted to attributes that take on a discrete set of values first the target attribute whose value is predicted by the learn tree it must be discrete valued a second one is the attributes that are tested in the decision node of the tree must also be discrete valued so this second restriction can easily be removed so that uh, the continuous valued a decision attributes can be incorporated into the learn tree so this can be accomplished by dynamically defining the new discrete value attributes that partition the continuous attribute values into a discrete set of intervals so in particular for an attribute a that is a continuous value the algorithm can dynamically create a new boolean attribute ac or uh, capital a you can say right so for an attribute a that is a continuous value the algorithm can dynamically create a new boolean attribute ac so that is true if uh, a is less than c and uh, false otherwise so in this case if uh, a is uh, less than c or less than or equal to c then it is true otherwise it is false so the only question is uh, how to select the best value for the threshold c as an example suppose we wish to include the continuous value attribute temperature in uh, describing the training example days in uh, learning task of uh, this particular table so you can consider this table so with respect to this table suppose uh, if we wish to include the continuous value attribute temperature in describing the training example days in the learning task here uh, suppose that the training example is associated with a particular node in the decision tree having the values for the temperature and the target attribute play tennis here you can see the values for temperature and the target attribute play tennis so these are what the different temperature values with respect to that these are what the result of play tennis attribute so here uh, what the should based a uh, boolean attribute should be defined based on the temperature so clearly we would like to pick a uh, threshold c that is small c you can consider so here uh, uh, we would like to pick a uh, threshold c that produces the greatest information gain so by sorting the examples according to the continuous attribute a then identifying the adjacent examples that differ in their target classification so we can generate a set of candidate thresholds between uh, the corresponding values of a here a is nothing but uh, a continuous value attribute that you consider so here Uh, we can generate a set of candidate should between the corresponding values of a so it can be shown that the values of c so c is nothing but a should right so a is nothing but a continuous value attribute and c is nothing but the should so here uh, we can generate a set of candidate should between the corresponding values of a so it can be shown that the value of the threshold c that maximize the information gain must always lie at such a boundary so these candidate threshold can be evaluated by computing the information gain associated with each so in the current example there are two candidate threshold corresponding to the values of temperature at which the value of play tennis changes for example consider 48 plus 60 divided by 2 and 80 plus 90 divided by 2 now consider these two examples here there are two candidate should corresponding to the values of temperature at which the value of plate tennis changes so with respect to these two examples the value of plate tennis obviously changes right 
Here the information gain can be computed for each of the candidate attribute that is the temperature which is greater than 54 and the temperature which is greater than 85 and the best can be selected that is the temperature which is uh, greater than 54 so this is considered as the best value selected or the best select the best uh, which is the best temperature which is selected here that is for the temperature greater than 54 so this dynamically created boolean attribute can then be compute with uh, the other discrete valued candidate attributes available for going that uh, splits the continuous attribute into the multiple intervals rather than just two intervals based on a single threshold. So this is what an approach here uh, which will uh, discuss uh, the issues in uh, the decision tree learning that is incorporating continuous valued attributes. So incorporating continuous value attributes will uh, again impact on uh, the decision tree learning. And uh, the very next uh, approach is uh, alternate two measures for selecting the attributes so that are take up in next class. Thank you. So here uh, uh, keep on understanding uh, these uh, approaches. So these approaches are uh, very very important which will uh, uh, discuss or uh, which will deal with uh, the issues in a decision tree learning. Thank you.